Hello friends, in this video we will see a simplest implementation of a simple autoencoder. So if you remember uh, this slide from the last video, we talked about that the simplest autoencoder can be that it has just one input layer which will take the data and this will be equal to the dimension of the input data and then a bottleneck layer of a smaller size and then a decoder which will uh, generate the output of the same size as input. So if input is 1000 dimensional, 1000 cross 1 and uh, a vector of 1000 cross 1 and uh, this bottleneck layer is 200 cross 1 and then this output will be 1000 cross 1 vector. So this bottleneck layer will represent the representation of this input data in a lower dimension that is in compressed form and in this video in particular we will be uh, using this MNIST handwritten data set. So this is the one of the simplest data set that is available in almost all the deep learning frameworks and the dimension of each image in this MNIST handwritten data set is 28 cross 28 but we will not use the convolutional layers in this case because we are currently trying to build a simplest possible autoencoder so we will use simple neural network so if this is image is 28 cross 28 then total we have 28 cross 28 pixels in this image uh, that is 784 so we have 784 pixels in the image and each pixel will take a value from 0 to 255. So essentially we have a vector of 784 elements, 784 cross 1. So we can build a network in which we will have 784 neural network net, uh, nodes in the first layer and then we will have an intermediate layer of 32 nodes let's say and finally we will have 784 nodes in the output and we can reshape it to create the output image so we will take the input image reshape and convert it to a 784 cross 1 which will in turn be converted to this lower dimension then back to 784 and which we will convert back to 28 cross 28. So this is uh, one of the outputs of this autoencoder. This two is recreated and this is the compressed representation. So let's start writing the code for this. So I have opened a new Jupyter notebook. So first we will import the essential libraries. So we will import So we will use input layer and we will use dense or fully connected layer in which every node in the next level, next layer is connected to all the nodes in the previous layer. Although the network may learn and discard some of those connections or give a very low weight to them. So effectively they will not be connected. And then we will import data set. MNIST handwritten data set then we will also need NumPy and then matplotlib's pyplot library and let's run it so it will take some time and import it so it has imported these libraries so now we will define the encoding dimension
64 let's say then we will read the input emails define input and this is the input layer of the network input and its shape is 28 cross 28 so we will be converting it to 784 cross 1 and then the encoded layer it will be a dense layer and we will use the ReLU activation and it will apply it on the previous layer that is input layer and then the decoded, decoded layer is also a dense layer, fully connected layer and its output is same as input that is 784 and then we will build the auto encoder model and in this model input will be the input layer will be the input image layer and output will be the decoded layer and then we will also create an encoder model and its input is again input image and output is encoded and we will create a placeholder for an encoded input so we will call it uh, encoded input and we will extract the last layer from uh, the autoencoder and then we will create a decoder model and we will now compile the model so we can run autoencoder our autoencoder model dot compile and we will use optimizer So we have compiled the model and now we will read the data from the MNIST dataset and written dataset.
So it will give four uh, sets, X train, Y train, that is the training set and the corresponding levels, then test set and corresponding levels. Well, but here in this case, in case of autoencoders, the input is same as the output. So we will not need the Y values. So we will load X train and then just a placeholder for Y value and then X test and Y test. So we have loaded these in X train and Y train. And now what we can do is we can divide the values by 255 so that it's normalized to 0 and 1, between 0 and 1. And the same thing for X test. And then we will reshape it to 784. So this will have, uh, I think, 10,000 images. So the first, uh, the length of this is 10,000. And then each of those 10,000 uh, data have dimension of 28 cross 28. So this len x train, that is 10,000. So it's 10,000 cross 28 cross 28. So we can reshape it to 10,000 cross 10,000 data, each of 784 size. So this first is the length which will be preserved. And then we will multiply the other two dimensions. And the same thing for test. And then let's also print the values of their shapes. And let's run it. So the train set has 60,000 images and the test set has 10,000 images. And this second 28 cross 28 we have converted to 784. And now we will fit this data in our autoencoder model. So what we will do, we will do autoencoder, the name of our model, that is autoencoder dot fit and we will pass the x train and x test. And in this case autoencoder, the input is same as output. So we will pass x train and again x train because output y train is also x train and we will run it for 50 epochs and then 
match size let's keep it 256 and we will shuffle the data and for validation we will use the X test and again Y test is same as X test in the case of autoencoders so let's run it so it will run for 50 epochs and you will see the loss function decreasing so it's after first epoch it's 0.34 then after second epoch it's 256 then 230 210 you see it's decreasing so it will run for 50 epochs and it will almost converge so let it be running we will write the further code so once it has run we will do the prediction on that model so we will have encoded images So first we will encode the image and then we will use our decoder. So decoded So this decoded images will contain the regenerated images. So let it complete first, then we will run it. So I will create another cell just for uh, plotting purpose I will not uh, run this cell until we have this model fit so let's write the code for plotting so for how many digits we will display and then So it has completed 35 epochs, it's still running. So while plotting we will uh, reshape uh, the outputs to 28 cross 28 ok so now it has uh, completed 50 fox and the loss has reduced significantly so we can run this encoder and then decoder and now let, let me complete the remaining part of plotting first
so we will not show the axis and then display the reconstruction and let's run it and let's see what are the values so you see the first row is the exact uh, in the, the input data from the data set and then it was encoded to a lower dimension and finally we got back 28 cross 28 output image you see the output is uh, quite similar to input one that means uh, the bottleneck layer was a sufficiently good uh, representation, compressed representation of this input data because the decoder was able to recreate the output from that. But there is some loss as you can see it's slightly blurry along the edges but that's expected. So this uh, autoencoder can be used for compressing the data and also getting rid of redundancy in the data uh, for example noise. So this was the simplest uh, implementation of a simple autoencoder. In the further videos we will see more complex uh, models of this autoencoder. So see you in the next video.